live and pre-recorded. This is the Red Ticket Blues Podcast. I am Brian Buckley. This is being recorded on August 18th to hit the internet on August 19th. You can listen to the show on iTunes, TuneIn Radio, Stitcher, YouTube, and follow me on the Twitter at BrianBuck13. Finally, I get to do the podcast. You know, my neighbors, they got a lot of nerve, you know, mowing lawns and, and weed whacking and, you know, they reproduce and have kids and they're making noises. I mean, I'm still speaking softly because I don't know if they're still out there, but when I'm talking shit about them, but, you know, they, this is my time, my time in here. Out there, it's their time. All right? They can do whatever they want. Not on my time. They got a lot of nerve. Anyways, enough of that. How's everybody doing? I am back from Toronto. And I will tell you, the one game I went to is the one game the Yankees lost. Hey, that's life, right? We'll uh, discuss my trip to Toronto and the Rogers Center. We'll touch in on James Harrison and talking uh, about participants participatory trophies and if they belong in sports or not if you haven't seen that linebacker of the Steelers James Harrison and the further possible pussification of America we'll uh, we'll also get into uh, what was the other thing I wanted to get into oh Ichiro uh, bypassing Ty Cobb in professional hits but you know MLB may take a different stance on that and we'll sprinkle in some other stuff all over the place but let's start on my weekend, yes. The show's not about me, except for right now. So let's get into my trip to our neighbor to the north. And overall, it was a very good time. Uh, I will say this. I underestimated the size of Toronto. Toronto is a very large place, very large city. My wife and I did a lot of walking around there, and we, we definitely underestimated it. We underestimated it big time. We got a little place right outside the Rogers Center. And if you follow me at Brian Buck 13 you can see some of those pictures. I mean, we've got a place from Airbnb, a luxury condo. And I'm not trying to sound bougie, but, uh, you know, it only costs like $100 a night. So luxury condo, hey, I'll take it. We flew there. Maybe that's a little bougie. Um well, it was fine, though. It was only like an hour flight, but then it's like 10 hours driving, so I'm not interested in that. But Toronto's good. The people are very nice. People are uh, they're overly nice. It's very awkward. Uh, I don't know if that's being an American or if that's just being someone who's grown up in the Northeast. But people coming up to me saying, do you need help with something? Especially at like a train station. It's very odd. I feel as if I'm going to get my wallet picked. Well, no, that doesn't make any sense. My wallet stolen. Very strange feeling. But it, it was good. You know what I mean? It's like, uh, what was I thinking? I was just thinking about this before. You, you know... You remember in high school, there were those people that always did good, and, and but then they threw it in your face? Like, we'll call we'll call that person Gilbert. Gilbert's like Europe. They try to do things, and then at the same time, they tell you that they're better than you. But then there was, they, you know, there was there was Kyle. Kyle's like Canada. He did all the right things, but he wasn't throwing it in your face. You know, if someone shit on Kyle or something, you'd be like, hey, hey, come on. Kyle's cool. He's a good guy. Oh, yeah? You ever hang out with him? No, no, I'm not out with him. But, I mean, I, I see him at parties. I've never actually called him. He's an acquaintance. If he's around, we're around. But I mean, I don't. I don't call him to hang out. That's how I look at his Canada. They're, they're, they put it this way. I went to the game, but the the day before, we went to this place called Kensington. Uh, it's a little area. It's sort of like a smaller version of Greenwich Village. Wacky stuff, you know, hipsters and dumb shit on the walls, and you know, people are dressed like idiots. You know, that sort of thing. And we went to a bar and we're watching the game, and these guys are all decked out in Blue Jays gear because the whole city is Blue Jays crazy right now. So we're sitting there watching the game, and it's weird. They're all dressed up. They got the jerseys, the hats on, and there's not a lot of talking about the game itself. It's like, you know, Tulowitzki comes up to the plate, and they're like, yeah, Tulowitzki. And then Beltron came up to the plate, and the guy goes, hey, there he is. There's Beltron. But that was it. <laughs> there was no actually rooting or anything like that. I know a lot of the games weren't the most uh, rip-roaring games this weekend. But still, I found it strange. I found it strange. Uh, But we'll talk about the game I went to, as I've already probably bored you about my vacation enough. Um, On Sunday, it was bobblehead dial day. And from my luxury apartment, uh, I could see the lines forming. Now, the game starts at 1. Lines, and they allow you in the building at 11. The lines started at about... Shit. They were already there when I woke up. I woke up around 9, I'd say. I woke up, and the lines were already there. They were already there. 
And I'm thinking, what the hell is going on here? Why are all these people lined up? And it just got bigger and bigger and bigger. And like I said, if you look on my Twitter feed, at BrianBuck13, I'm not even just trying to, you know, whore myself out as normal. I'm just saying, if you look at these pictures, you had the entire area. And I would imagine it has to do with the bobbleheads. Because it was a bobblehead for a turn back the time, the drive of 85 at Lloyd Mosby, Jesse Barfield, and who am I missing? George Bell. And we went down there, and uh, we eventually went down there. I got my bobbleheads, so that was good. And I, I could see why people wanted them. They're going on eBay for probably close to $100 each. So bingo bongo right there. I, I'm, I'm, I'm good there. I'll have to do that soon. Uh, so we get in, and Roger Centered, as you can imagine, is enormous. It is enormous. They opened the roof, um, walked around. And, you know, they got a lot of a lot of food, a lot of, you know, just as many food vendors that every, any place you'd go to. But it was like they had a bunch of food vendors, but there was no variety. They just changed the name of the place. And it was the same thing. It was hot dogs, hot dogs, you know, just regular ballpark shit. I really didn't find any of it that interesting. I don't know what I was actually expecting, but anyways, I uh, walked around there early because I wanted the bobbleheads always drag my wife to the game early and she just gets angry at me not angry but just like well i'm glad we're here four hours before the game this is great um so we're going to our seats and you know it's a packed house the place is never packed i told you i paid 85 dollars for 12 dollar tickets so walk to my seats showed i've never been there before i saw i show the ticket to the uh the uh, usher he goes yeah you're right over here but sir you can't bring that beer in here what um, yeah, you're in an alcohol-free section. So, luckily, I hadn't really been drinking that much, because let's say I had a few drinks, I would have been like, whoa, what the fuck is this? Oh, come on, man, this is bullshit. I realized this this guy is just enforcing the rules. There's a sign there that says it. I bought these tickets off of StubHub, and it did not say anything about alcohol-free. Usually, they're supposed to have that shit on there. Nothing. So, this was new. Uh, I've never really been to a game when I didn't have a beer in my hand, uh, probably since the age of, what, freaking 19 or so. Um, so what happened was I, we'd get up and go get a beer, drink it in the tunnel, come back, then do that over and over again, which, you know, it's a little bit, a little bit much. You know, I, I don't mind. I, I understand the alcohol-free section for families and stuff because you get loud drunks and they, they can be annoying. But, I mean, that's what I grew up with at the old Yankee Stadium. I mean, that was part of the allure. You sit next to some guy and it was funny because he was saying all sorts of curse words and yelling and screaming and people would laugh and, you know, they would chant bad words. I was like, this is awesome. Oh, my God, they're chanting asshole. <laughs> this is heaven. I'm telling all my friends about this. But well, it's time to change participation trophy world we live in but i'll tell you i i'm not a huge fan of heights but i wouldn't say i'm scared of heights but boy i sat in that front row on the third deck and i did not enjoy it whatsoever it's probably a good thing i didn't have any alcohol unlike today as i'm drinking a two roads brewery one of the big breweries here in connecticut the two roads brewery in Stratford. this is a limited edition one this is the two roads unorthodox russian imperial stout like I said, you know, seven something was a little much for a school night here. Nine point two. So uh, luckily, I only have one of these because if not, I was going to be uh, forcing the wife to uh, watch Michael Jordan videos on YouTube, which I've been known to do after a few drinks. So you see, and look, he just look, look at that one. And if he, have you seen that one? I've showed. Did, I didn't show you that. No. So um, sitting down, as you can imagine, the or the area we're in does not have a lot of life in it. It's blazing hot. I did not know Canada, Toronto is supposed to be this hot. That sounds like a stupid, just ignorant comment, but I thought it was always like like 10 degrees colder or something like that, but it was not. It was hot. It was uncomfortably hot. And I'll tell you what, what didn't make it any better was the Blue Jays have this sort of like hired cheerleader, um, at least in my section. Oh, maybe they put that in the alcohol-free section to to wake people up. I don't know. But this woman would come in and she would start these cheers like uh, like this. Hey, 
So that's like, I, I, I was the only clip I could get of it. But, I mean, she'd do this over and over again every time the Blue Jays were up. And it was, I don't need to be influenced. If I would be insulted, imagine if that ever happened at Yankee Stadium. Imagine if we ever had some sort of person, come, come on, guys, let's do it, yay, yay, come on. They would have things thrown at them, or, well, it's a new Yankee Stadium, I don't know, they probably just wouldn't even pay attention to them, they'd probably be on their phones. But the old, boy, that old Yankee Stadium, they would have been throwing things, get the fuck out of the way, sit down, go in the back in the kitchen, things like that. And she she was no prize either. Uh, she probably looked like she did some unspeakable things to be on the back of a Harley within her life. She probably had a rose tattoo on her chest. Maybe not. I don't know. She, she was kind of gross, though. Looked like she looked like she'd done meth before. <sighs> Just a lady leading a chair, and I've already have all these accusations about her. But Toronto was good. Um, the Yankees, of course, ended up losing the big play. Carlos Beltran losing the ball in the sun. And either a batter or two later, Jose Bautista um, hitting a two-run home run to make it 3 nothing, And the Blue Jays went on to win 3-1. The Yankees did win the series. They won last night. Brian Mitchell took a ball to the face. Uh, that's not good. I stole CeCe's shoe, by the way. I was in Toronto. I was in the club because me and my wife go to the club all the time at 3 a.m. whenever we go places. That's what we do. And I took his big red shoe. No, no, that's not true. Uh, we don't go to clubs, and if you go to a club till 3 a.m., I probably don't want to meet you. Um, the only time I ever used to go to clubs was when you're young and you first get that ID. You're totally following whoever drove you, or it's peer pressure at that point, and I would have to go to these awful clubs in downtown New Haven, and I hated every second of it until one day I just said, I don't want to go to clubs anymore. I don't enjoy it. I don't enjoy having to grind up on someone to sound like such a prude right now but seriously like this is what i'm doing yeah hey how you doing hey it's like almost like cavemen sort of thing like eh, is she into it <laughs> fuck it i don't know i hate everything about that scene i hate everything about clubs and if you go to a clubs then just die <laughs> so the yankees uh <laughs> And Mark Teixeira, who's had a great year, hurt himself last night. I didn't have, to, didn't think I'd have to play this clip because he's been so good this year. But we're gonna have to play it. Is it three strikes, Doc? You want it straight? I'm sure, I do straight. It's three strikes. But the Yankees keep on keeping on. Uh, let's see how are they doing right now. I don't know why I do this, but I guess for shits and giggles. Let's see. Stimulating radio here or podcast? Not even radio. All right, da, 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 da. we are zero zero. Okay, um, that's the Yankees right now. Let's see. So let's move on to our uh, our next topic. Oh, everyone wins. The light that's shining out from you will touch everything that you see. Yeah, linebacker James Harrison. Um. He once told Men's Journal that if Roger Goodell was on fire and I had to piss to put him out, I wouldn't do it. I hate him and will never respect him. Fair enough. Every man is entitled to their opinion. Seems a bit harsh. Especially for, you know, he's the commissioner of your league where you make millions of dollars. But whatever. He, he has his reasons. Um, he took a stand this week in regards to participation trophies for youth sports. He told his... Well, he found out that his two sons had received trophies, particip- participation trophies, not for being an all-star or for being a champion or anything like that, and he wanted them returned. He's returning them until they earn a real trophy. His quote was, I'm not sorry for believing that everything in life should be earned, and I'm not about to raise two boys to be men by making them believe they're entitled to something just because they tried their best. Because sometimes your best is not enough. And they should drive you to want to be better. Not cry and whine until somebody gives you something to, to shut you up and keep you happy. Uh, James Harrison is a dirty player. He's one of the dirtiest players in the league. His entire uh, resume includes more than $150,000 in fines for questionable, be- questionable behavior on the field. This isn't even a guy doing the bad things off the field. This is on the field, $150,000 fines. But let's be honest here. What he's saying is 100% true. Now, kids are being told these days that they're perfect. They're, well, not perfect. They're special. 
Everyone's special in their own way. You're great. You get a star. You get a prize. You get a ribbon. Not everyone's great. Uh, And it's terrible that we... I'm not saying that, you know, you got to show kids pictures of homeless people and say this is what you're going to be like if you don't do the goddamn dishes. But this idea that we're always going to have kids thinking they're that they're the best. They're not. There are many situations. And in most situations in life, you're not going to be the best. You know why? Because you're not special and you're not good enough. It happens. Now, I sort of grew up, I'm 35 years old, I sort of grew up in that area where... It wasn't really happening yet. It was... I think I got a participation trophy or two. But my brother, who's four years younger, he started getting them nonstop. It started becoming the norm that you would get a trophy. A trophy for what? Nothing! Because you signed up. You went to the registration that day and you did whatever job you did on that team. You may have sat the bench the whole time. You may have been the star player. You get the same trophy because everyone's perfect, like a bunch of communists. Everyone's the same. It's terrible. Uh, And I'll tell you, you know, from someone who played on tons of shitty teams throughout my entire athletic career, I don't think I was never on a winner. Never a first place team from t-ball to high school to even college intramurals. I was the best was ever was a second place farm league team. Miners, farms, whatever you call it. The one before Little League. That was the best. So I know what it's like. I am glad I don't have to look at all those trophies to remember me from those awful, awful teams. I can't wait to see, like, documentaries. Well, no, you wouldn't see that. I was just thinking how whenever you have, like, a great athlete, they, they say, this is my trophy room. Or is that what people are going to, kids of this generation, they're going to tell their kids. And they grow up and say, oh, yeah, here are my tools. Uh, here, here, Here's my uh, whatever. Here is my baseball cards. I kept. Here are my trophies, my participation trophies. How many all-star teams did you make? None. How many times did you win the championship, Dad? Never. But I signed the registration form. Your grandfather did. And, uh, well, got a lot to be proud of. A lot to be proud of. Look at those trophies, huh? Participant. That means I participated. How much? We don't know. But, you know, people, I, I've always said that the, the, these problems, these ideas that everyone's perfect and, and, and everyone's a winner, it's going to ruin people uh, when they become adults. It's disgusting to think, like James Harrison said, that everyone is going to get their way all the time because they had been they had grown up to, to be, they've been programmed to think that whatever they do matters. Whatever they do is great. That's not always right. Now, I'm going to jump into something a little bit. Sorry for touching the microphone there. I'm going to jump into something that's maybe a little off-base from this. Slightly off-base. We have stuff like, there, there are so many people, I call them cause monsters, that always have to have a cause. A cause about everything. And they're not happy unless they have a cause. And it's basically browbeating people to believe what you want to believe. In case in point, participate. This is, jeez. Participant trophy people, participatory trophy people, they've been told that. They've been said, this is the right way. So you go on Twitter and you see all these people, James Harrison is a sad man. I'm so disappointed in him. Why? Because you said so? Case in point, Cecil the Lion. Okay, let's let's get this out, out of the way. Cecil the Lion. All right. I talk to people. And some people made some good points about Cecil the Lion. Some, I feel, are lunatics. This is what I gathered from this. Okay? Cecil was a lion. Can we stop acting like it was the fucking Holocaust? It is one lion who we gave a name to. There is no birth certificate. We decided to call him Cecil. 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 I see people on Twitter and at these rallies with signs that says, I am Cecil. No, you aren't. You're a human being. You are not a lion. Unless your name is Brett Cecil or Cecil Fielder or Sideshow Bob, Bob's brother Cecil, do not hold that sign. You are a human. You are not a lion. I mean, other countries in the world where 
lions are like an issue because they may come to your house and kill you. They must be the same people that probably in third world countries that piss and shit in the same river they get their drinking water from are looking at us like crazy people. They're saying, this this is a lion, you know, a, a, a ferocious monster that would kill you. But I've been told he's a friendly lion. I'd like to see that. Um, I don't know what his people skills were like. Well, that's right. He wasn't a person. He was a lion. I don't know what his lion skills were like. Uh, But there is the other end of it. I'll say this. I'll say this right now. If you're someone that's really, truly into... uh, And and I... Before I even get to that, I am not some hunting person. I'm not a gun guy. I don't care about hunting. I think poaching is disgusting. And I think that doctor who killed Cecil the lion should have to pay. He should pay a fine. And he should even maybe even go to prison. They're not going to extradite him. I mean, people can say that all they want. But I'd be highly, highly skeptical of that ever happening. But if you really care about it, and you know what, you donate money, and you remember this two weeks from now, then you're a better than than me. Because you know what? Those people have the right to say to me, yeah, Brian, what the hell good did you do today? And you know what? You're right. But I'll tell you, the, the, these cause monsters who... who it's, it's why I'm starting to dislike social media more, especially Twitter. And I love Twitter. But it's... Everything is so force-fed. Found, this is the story. Take it aside. Take it now. And be passionate about it. Do not listen to the opposition. And then give passive-aggressive comments to the opposition. And see... I know this is more than me just bitching and moaning about anything. I'm not saying get rid of lions. I'm not saying get rid of lions. Get rid of sharks, though. I've talked about this. Kill all the sharks. I'm sick of the sharks. Every time I see... they get rid, If Donald Trump says tomorrow that he wants to kill all the sharks, he's got my vote. He's got my vote. I will vote for Donald Trump if he says he wants to kill all the sharks. Done. Signed, sealed, delivered. You know, I'd like to... You know, it's funny. The two people that I'd love to see in the election... Be in the debate would be Donald Trump and Bernie Sanders. Sanders is your, you know, you know why I like both of them? Because they might, they they take extreme viewpoints. There are people out there, my neighbors, we got a lot of fucking nerve. They take extreme viewpoints, but they mean what they say. They're not bullshit artists like the rest of them. Well, sure, I'm sure there's some bullshit behind it, but... I really, I respect a person that I don't, maybe don't agree with their position on something, but, but they say it and they say what they feel. I mean, the idea that any of these politicians give a shit about hot button, hot button issues like abortion is ridiculous. Give me a break. Those guys don't care about abortion. You think they're going to bed saying, oh, well, this is one right to choose. I just don't know. They're doing it because it pulls on people's heartstrings. Just like Cecil Lyon. I don't know. I am Cecil. No, you're not. No, no, you are not. You are a human. You're a human being. Anyways, uh, let's get into uh, little Ichiro. He passed. Well, he, I don't know. He may have passed by now, but he tied. No, he passed. Let's see here. Hold on a second. Yes, Miami Marlins outfielder Ichiro Suzuki passed Ty Cobb with the uh, 4,100 and where's the number here? He has, has a robust 2,915 career hits. Um, that's in the major leagues, Brian. Come on, Jesus Christ. Get your numbers straight. Uh, he has a total of, with the numbers in the Japanese league, has a total of 4,193 hits. Now, baseball and many others are celebrating this as professional hits, which celebrating the idea itself is deceiving. Now, I like Ichiro. Um, I think he came over to the United States to play. There's a lot of skepticism. Never really seen a major player. We never really seen a position player do anything in the United States before he came here. Won Rookie of the Year and MVP in the same year, which was amazing. I mean, he had a cool, calm demeanor. And he's, I mean, he still does. I'm mean, not talking about that he doesn't play. He just isn't the same player anymore. He's struggling on a team that stinks, which he's done his whole career. Then his team stinks. It doesn't matter. But... Um, what the hell was I talking about? Jesus, I completely lost my train of thought. Ichiro, what are we talking about here? I mean, he, uh... 
he he got the he came to the United States in twenty when he was twenty seven years old, and I respect the guy a hell of a lot. And it seems like people want to, and I don't understand the rationale. They say because it's professional, it's professional. Well, you know, single A minor leagues is professional too. No, I'm not trying to shit on the Japanese league. The Japanese league is like triple A to quadruple A. I mean, you notice struggling MLB stars go there to sort of get a tune-up. And guys, when they feel they've achieved everything in Japan, come to the United States. So, I think everyone wants to get on the love train with Ichiro. But just remember that those what those those hits that he got in Japan, those 1,278 hits in Japan... While it's a, it's impressive, it's not the same. Well, I mean, here's an idea. The Japanese leagues are very good. But you know, remember, remember Tuffy Rhodes? Do you remember Tuffy Rhodes? If you know anything about trivia, baseball trivia, and I know who Tuffy Rhodes is. I'm not looking him up. I'm just looking up some numbers that I wanted to show you. Tuffy Rhodes is the answer to a very, well, not a very big, but he's the answer to a trivia question. He's the only National League player ever to hit three home runs. Three home runs in his in an opening day for the Chicago Cubs. And I think that was in 1994. 19, 1993. No, let's say. I'm sorry. 1990, 1994. He also finished his career with 13 home runs. A career batting average of 224. On base percentage, 310. Yeah, he won the MVP in the same league that Ichiro got those numbers. That doesn't diminish Ichiro Suzuki, because he probably would have got a lot of those numbers in the United States if he had played, but let's be honest. Let's be real. Come on. Come on! It's not the same. So I wish Ichiro all the best. Um, One of these people, you know, that is like the new thing now. If, If someone takes a old school approach to everything. Get off my lawn. <laughs> Gran Torino. You know, this is what I fucking hate about the internet. You, can, you guys can't come up with anything. Do you see like Tom Brady in that uh, courtroom? You know, sometimes they do courtroom sketches and if you've probably already seen this, the faces, they, they're sort of like a goblin looking person. They're, they're very crude drunks and Brady's was not good and it was not done well. It, well, I mean, he made him look ugly and he's a pretty boy. So the internet had so much fun with you had to photoshop it on every goddamn thing you could possibly imagine it's just so overkill it's like vomiting all right i'm not in a good mood with this shit uh we'll also talk, you know we'll talk we'll talk about this next time on here uh france mike francesa getting bumped uh to fox 2 and the fox go fox sports go app it's colin cowherd now is with fox sports and the Great pontiff, the sports pontiff, the sports pope. I don't think he's made a uh, formal declaration, formal comment on the demotion of sorts. He won't look at it as it as a demotion because that's not how Mike is. But we'll get into that. We may have a guest on uh, on the next few podcasts to talk more about that. And that's the podcast for this week. You know, it wasn't that good. Eh, it was all right. It was pretty damn good. I love it. Anyways, you can listen to the show on iTunes, TuneIn Radio, Stitcher, YouTube, and listen to me blabber on even more on in my daily thoughts on Twitter at BrianBuck13. I'm out of here.